before the boulevard, there were uh, already some biblical squatters down in there. Yeah? Some, uh, they had come down there to stake out their territory. Because I believe the more I read, the more likely it was that there was going to be something large, uh, a boulevard built in that area, that there was going to be development down there. This is Schultz on the left, uh, Daniel Schultz and um, Josef Ramseyer, who were among the founders of the Fort Wayne Bible Institute. Welcome. Um, and it was Schultz on the left who was the first preacher of the group and the first uh, head of the school, which became the Wayne Bible College. Um, and that building uh, that I showed you in the 700 block earlier was named after him. Um, as it reads up there, they walked uh, southward along South Wayne, past the point of uh, where the street ended, and into a grove of trees, um, quiet, beautiful trees, some of which are probably still standing in the neighborhood. And that's what they built facing South Wayne, because South Wayne was coming in their direction, Rudisil was, Rudisil was still an idea, 1904 to 1905. First graduating class. The interior of the building. And a dormitory room. The building, by the way, is in fine condition. Um, it suffered a fire in 2000 and Eight, I believe, 2007, 86. Um, it's in here when I know by when I read it. But the building is not structurally damaged. It's just smoke, some water damage. Uh, but it's the beams in there, the structure. What fire wasn't that hot. Uh, the second graduating class. Already, there's opposition on the boulevard to the. Uh, to the construction of it. Um, Foster, again, in 28, is, is uh, thinking back about the uh, opposition that they, uh, they met as they uh, bought land um, and started laying the boulevard. The last point there, 40-foot uh, lots assessed at $100. I, I think he's, uh, I think that's a little, um, Excessive. Mine has longer than a 40 foot front and it doesn't assess at 25 times a hundred dollars. This is the land that in 1912 he gave to the city of Fort Wayne along with his brother. That's the entrance to Foster Park. Um, most of the original purchase was along the tree line back there along the river banks. Later he bought more land, gave more of it to the city of Fort Wayne. And an early picture of Rudisil Boulevard. Um, note that uh, they continued to extend eastward grading and purchase of right of way. World War I slowed things down. Uh, fewer houses were built in, uh, during the three years in which America was actively involved in the war. Um, those are two Fort Wayne kids. Um, one on the left in the Kaiser's uniform, and the one on the right in the French uniform. And in 1917, we're moving forward with the boulevard. 214 of those trees were planted along the boulevard. Um, it was a rough start. Most of them died. So thinking forward, they planted American elms to replace the plane trees. It's an oriental plane. Uh, I guess we also call it a sycamore. Uh, this, these are new construction in the uh, 19 teens, I mean 18, 19, 14. Before the war and uh, one during the war and then uh, two after the war. On the boulevard in the 1920s, uh, they continued construction all along the boulevard, east and west. South side was built in 22, um, adding to the uh, movement of people toward the south side. Um, and in 24, uh, more citizens petitioned to pave more boulevard, and they paid for it. They paid part of it, as if it were Barrett bonding today. 
Yeah, I believe it was 21 that this uh, building, First Missionary Church, was built right across from Schultz Hall. Uh, the first pastor was uh, D. Daniel Schultz, after whom Schultz Hall was named. Up and down the boulevard, you'll see the names of people that were associated with the Bible College. It's a picture of it today. And uh, you can see this is looking from the Bible College, the back side of Schultz Hall, into Southwood Park. You can see that there's already uh, you know, trees are developing in the area, that there's a nice sidewalk, the streets there, the houses are coming up. More 20s construction. Um, Tudor Revival seems to be the dominant style on the boulevard along with Craftsman. Except for this one, which is a Spanish Revival. And it's at the end of the boulevard just down by Foster Park. Um, in, late, in the late 1920s, Bethany Hall was put up, so it was the second building on the campus. And in that same year, the fire station was built at the corner of um, Lafayette and Rugesville Boulevard. And it served the neighborhood until the 1970s. Still opposition. That's an Adolf Janicki, Yannicke. Um, there's no question. A great fight to overcome the resistance. I was at the park department um, a couple weeks ago, Sarah Nature, and we went through the um, scrapbook the park department. The, they keep a scrapbook of everything written about this park department goes in there. And next to an article about the development of the boulevard was a cartoon uh, showing Foster uh, firing a cannon about the size of this one, a huge cannon, at a small object on a fence post. The fence post was labeled Abend Post, evening newspaper, German newspaper in full at the time. On top of it was a chicken um, who had the head of um, the publisher of the Alvin Post at the time, a guy named Anselm Fulber. Anselm's tail was in the, uh, uh, looked like a lira, lyre, right, which is a symbol of the Menor Corps, of which he was a member. Um, there was a little dachshund at his feet with uh, some sausage in its mouth. Uh, and so I have a feeling that the Aben Post was not a supporter of Rufusol Boulevard, as it was a, in, headed um, um, a great object to overcome such a small beast. I think the opposition uh, was just regular average folk in Fort Wayne, as it is today, people that didn't want to, they were just happy with their lethargy and their procrastination and they just didn't want to do it. By 27, well, yeah, we can't have the whole system additions to the park and boulevard system. Of course, will be made as conditions warm. They've sort of given up. Foster's upset, uh, frustrated, angry, but the rest, of, some of the other ones are saying, well, you know, as, uh, as it warrants, it will develop the rest of the park and boulevard system. And Foster. He was not a happy person at this point. He, just, he died uh, five years later. But uh, at this point, I think he was upset because his dream, which I believe was a parking boulevard system, and I believe that he's the one or among those who brought um, Kessler and Zublin and the others to town. Um, he was the one that uh, gave the park to the community at the end of the boulevard. He built his home on the boulevard. He was a strong backer of this, and he saw it as something important for Fort Wayne, and he was very frustrated by the end of the 1920s. 
In the 1930s, probably the, uh, I would guess, the most important thing that happened on the boulevard was the construction of the Gospel Temple. Anybody remember it? I remember it clearly. I remember, see, I remember, I remember it clearly. A huge building down there next to where um, uh, the Sears was built in the uh, early 50s. And uh, it was a huge brick building that held 4,000 people at a time. Uh, notice in there that uh, an applicant for the position of evangelist was one William Graham, and he was turned down for the job. We call him Billy Graham. And, it's, oh well. and there's the, remember the Gospel Temple? Remember it now? Any remember that? <laughs> and that's E.B. Rediger up there. Um, construction in the 30s. Um, you know, the Art Modern house up there that uh, used to be the home of uh, uh, the maestro of the Fort Wayne Philharmonic and um, a couple colonial revivals that stand just to the west of the Art Modern, same side of the street. Uh, in the early 40s, first thing that uh, went up on the boulevard was uh, Founders Hall at the corner of Indiana and Ludisville. Um, Classrooms, offices, gymnasium, music rooms, now vacant. And a picture, probably about 1945, of Schultz Hall, Bethany, founders, and first missionary down there in Cornwall. Um, notice the wraparound porches on Schultz Hall. Southern bells could stand up there wave to their bows as they drive down along the road. So. And that in the front of Schultz Hall is called Schultz Drive, a little horseshoe. In the 1950s, um, I'm not a fan of the 1950s. Just not a fan of the 1950s. What happened on the boulevard was a, a Sunoco was built. A, a Lutheran church was built about a block away from another Lutheran church. Uh, the Gospel Temple uh, was on the north side, the Bonton Bakery. There's, um, there's all sorts of commercial development in the area bounded by uh, Calhoun and Lafayette. Um, the strip mall was built down there. At the time, it was uh, um, an elegant little strip mall. Remember Mayor's Menswear and um, what was Hutner's Paris? Hutner's Paris. And uh, the Meyer Brothers Drugstore was there. There was a Meyer Brothers all over town at the time. Um, I remember the dog and suds. Orange, no, yellow and red were their, their colors to bring elegance and sophistication to the boulevard. Um, in 54, the Bible College bought the Foster home, David Foster's building, and converted it to first um, I believe a men's dorm, and then it was a women's dorm, and then it was the student union, um, and it was, I believe they neglected it every step of the way. It's when I bought the place, um, I had to pull, they put, instead of repairing the roof, they just put up more drywall on the walls to cover over the water infiltration and the damage. You understand the process. There's the Sunoco station. At the uh, corner of the Pickway Road and Rudisil Boulevard. There's what the Sears looked like just before Tipman bought it. It had, uh, do you remember the Sears going up the escalator and the Sears? And it was, it was modern, it was elegant, it was sophisticated. I remember it well. 